one, one strike of the gavel in honor of March. And at seven o'clock, we will call the meeting to order of the Common Council July 2nd, 2012 Council meeting. Will the clerk read the quote? Certainly. Cooperation is the thorough conviction that nobody can get there unless everybody gets there. Will the clerk call the roll, please? Hold on. Everybody could push their number one. Sixteen present. A quorum is present. Tonight we have Troop 801, uh, Boy Scout Troop with us, and they will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Bill? Hang on. Thanks. Uh, 16 present. Quorum is present. Confirmation of the mayor's appointments. Alderman Hammond. Thank wait you, one second until we get the microphones on. I can just talk really loud. Keys broke. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to appoint Mai Zhang to the Mayor's International Committee. Second. It's been moved and seconded to appoint Mai Zhang to the Mayor's International Committee. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Sixteen ayes. Motion carried. Is there uh, anybody for the public forum this evening? No, there is not. Hearing none, Mayor's announcements. I hope everybody enjoys a good 4th of July and all the f uh, activities that are going around in the city. We'll be looking forward to uh, that. And don't forget the women's PGA is this weekend too. So with a lot of things going good in the uh, Sheboygan County. Consent agenda, Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move that ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that all ROs be accepted and filed and all RCs be accepted. Under discussion, Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, I'd like, like to be able to pull 2-4 uh, for a separate vote, please. 2-4, did you say, Alderman? Yes. We will vote on 2-4 separately then and do that first. 2-4 is an RC by law and licensing recommending granting a B, Class B liquor license. Look for a motion to accept. Alderman Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Mayor, move to accept and adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and adopt the RC. Any discussion? All those in favor, oh, I'm sorry. Clerk will call the roll. Go ahead. Fifteen ayes. Uh, one abstention. And one abstention, thank you. Okay, now we'll be back to the motion of the Consent agenda. Is there any discussion on the other items? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Okay. Got it. 16 ayes. 16 ayes, motion carried. Report of officers 3 1, an RO from the Chief Administrator Officer submitting to 2000. 
13 budget schedule. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file the report of officer. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and file the report of the officer. Any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Sixteen ayes. Motion carried. Three two through three eight will be referred with three seven. Oh. With three seven being referred to both strategic fiscal and committee of the whole. Alderman Borden. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, I did want that referred to the committee of the whole, and I just wanted to give the older person the head older person the heads up that I will be having a committee of the whole meeting on Tuesday, July 31st at tentatively at 6 p.m. And right now it's just going to be concerning the 2013 budget. So if the older persons would make a note of that, thank you. Okay, those will be referred. Resolutions for Alderman Billinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, would that 3-3, three, three, it's being referred to Committee of the Whole too? Jim, would that be discussed at that meeting too? Yes. Okay. Thank you. 4-1, resolutions introduced. A resolution by Alderman Board authorizing enter into a contract for purchase of two tandem axle dump trucks. Don't read. <laughs> that will be referred to <laughs> Public Works. 5-1, an RC from Law and Licensing recommending denying beverage license. Alderman Vandewey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. It's been moved in, Sorry. seconded Sorry. to to have the licenses, the RC be accepted and adopted. Is Robert Bachnick here? He is not here. Um, we invited him two times to appear before our committee and he did not um, call or show up, so we had to deny his license. Is there any other discussion on the RC? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Sixteen ayes. Motion carried. Committee report from law and licensing recommending denying taxi driver license 9590. Alderman Vandewille. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Alderman Vandewille. Is David Dallas here this evening? He is not here. Um, he did appear before the committee with an extensive record, and the committee voted 5-0 to zero to deny the license. Is there any discussion or questions? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Sixteen ayes. Motion carried. Five three and two five five will be referred. Ordinances introduced six one an ordinance by Alderman Van Akron Carlson, Lassard. Wangaman repealing the recreation section of 7451, Alderman Van Ackman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. It's been moved and seconded to suspend the rules. Is there any discussion on suspending the rules? Hearing none, we'll take a vote on just suspending the rules. Sixteen eyes to suspend. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I then would move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the or ordinance be put upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Borden. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. Uh, as in committee, uh, I will not be supporting this tonight. Uh, I have concerns about the, even though we have recreational immunity, I have some concerns that uh, if there would happen to be a tragedy down there, uh, the city w could be sued and right now I believe our deductible after talking to Attorney McLean is up to possibly as much as $125,000. And you, as usual in these cases, the attorneys uh, sue everybody in sight. So uh, I, have a, I have a problem with the, with the exposure even though we have the recreational uh, liability. Also a couple of weeks ago at Public Works, I'd like to make a, a friendly motion to this document if it does pass. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that uh, the, the city attorney draft a hold harmless agreement for people renting the quarry for different types of events. We had talked about that a couple of meetings ago uh, 
at Public Works before we were talking about even opening up this, opening this up to swimming, that if people were using that facility, we wanted the city attorney to draft this home uh, hold harmless agreement for people that are renting. And I talked to Attorney McLean earlier today, and he seemed to agree with me that uh, for people that are going to be renting that facility, it wouldn't hurt to have that in the agreement when the people rent that at Public Works that they hold the city harmless for anything that may happen down there regarding the swimming at the quarry. So I would, I would entertain that motion, a friendly, or a friendly motion or amendment to the document. Second. It's been moved and seconded to amend the document to uh, have the city attorney draw up, up a hold harmless agreement that would be handed out in the cases where the quarry is, has been rented out by a group. Right, it would be part of the rental agreement. Right. Is there any discussion on the, on the amendment? And we'll vote first on the amendment, unless you wanted to talk about the amendment or, okay. Voting on the amendment. Sixteen eyes on the amendment. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm assuming we're talking about the document yes, now. Yes, no, back to the document. Um, Attorney McLean, maybe I know you drafted a document for uh, Alderman Collison and myself explaining the risks and liabilities and that, and um, you essentially took the time to do that. Could you maybe share your findings with the group as to what the city's exposures, liabilities might be, and your legal opinion as to whether it's okay to city do it? attorney. Um, yes. Uh, thank you. Alderman uh, Carlson had asked whether or not uh, uh, the city would hold any liability if we open up the quarry with swim at your own risk signs posted. And uh, I advised uh, Alderman Carlson and uh, provided a copy to Alderman Hammond at his request uh, that the city has uh, recreational immunity under quite broad state statute, section 895.52 of the Wisconsin statutes. Uh, a recreational activity under the statute is an outdoor activity undertaken for the purpose of exercise, relaxation, or pleasure, and for purposes of discussion on the quarry, it covers water sports. And under that law, the city is owner, including any officer, employee, or agent of the city does not owe to any person who enters the owner's property to engage in a recreational activity any duty to keep the property safe for recreational activities or any duty to inspect the property or any duty to give warning of an unsafe condition, use, or activity. And except uh, in a couple uh, areas, which I'll touch on in a second, Neither the city or, nor any officer, employee, or agent of the city is liable for the death of, injury to, or any death or injury caused by a person engaged in a recreational activity on the city's property. Uh, the exceptions are a death or injury that occurs on property of which the city is the owner at an event for which the city charges an admission fee for spectators. So that would not be the case at the quarry. And the second is a death or injury caused by a malicious act or by a malicious failure to warn against an unsafe condition of which an official employee or agent of the city knew, which occurs on property designated by the city for recreational purposes. Uh, for purposes of the exception, conduct is malicious when it's the result of hatred, ill will, or revenge, or is undertaken when insult or injury is intended. Uh, so it, very broad immunity. Uh, I got talked to Alderman Boren this afternoon or, or this morning. There, uh, there's been a number of cases uh, interpreting the statute uh, over the years uh, because it's so broad and the courts have liberally construed it because the statute says it's to be liberally construed uh, in favor of granting immunity to suit. Um, and I know there was one case involving a school district, a school where a child was injured at recess on playground equipment. And uh, 
they sued the school district and the school, and uh, their immunity was not granted on the basis that it really wasn't a recreational activity because the recess was part of the uh, regularly scheduled school day, and it was basically a required uh, activity. Uh, but other than that, uh, there's, there's cases, I think it was uh, either Kenosha or Racine, uh, where there was <clears throat> suit brought for against the lifeguards at the, at the beach down there for uh, negligent uh, training, negligent supervision, uh, and uh, failure to perform their duties uh, appropriately. Court said recreational immunity applies, no liability. Uh, so I, I, I think recreational immunity is very broad uh, in Wisconsin. The, uh, the purpose the legislature had was uh, to uh, give landowners, property owners, uh, and governmental agencies uh, assurance that they could open up their property to the public to use for recreational purposes without getting sued. Uh, so that's been the intent, and it's, it's been uh, very broadly construed, as I say. Now, the only uh, caveat as I, I would give, as Alderman Bourne mentioned, uh, we are self-insured for liability, and we've got uh, insurance over and above our threshold $125,000 self-insured retention. So uh, the first $125,000 uh, of expense, whether it's defense costs or whatever, uh, in a lawsuit is uh, out of the city's pocket and we're, we're not insured for that. Anything over that is uh, covered by our insurance policy. So, you know, one thing that the council has to weigh and, and uh, I think it's it's clearly a policy decision by the council and it's a discretionary decision on your part is whether to open up the quarry uh, without lifeguards or to go back to uh, what the situation was previously where you did have lifeguards. Now there's obviously cost to that uh, to provide the lifeguards and I think that's what you have to balance against uh, opening up at your own risk and just uh, allowing uh, members of the public to uh, uh, use it on their own. Um, the other, other comment I had made, and it doesn't really address, it's not uh, so much the recreational immunity issue because I think it would probably be covered by recreational immunity as well uh, because uh, even man-made objects, uh, if they're recreational in nature and and uh, provide for recreational activities uh, would be held harmless or immune but uh, in looking at the facility there's old uh, stairs going up to the former water slide that's like uh, three stories worth of wooden stairs there I think right now there's a chain link fence blocking it off but it wouldn't be very difficult to climb that fence and have kids climbing up those stairs and falling off the stairs uh, and that really isn't designed as it's not uh, currently in use as a recreational facility I mean, it certainly was when there was a water slide there but I guess my suggestion was to uh, take that structure down and any other structures that there may have been uh, in that area that related to the water slide and so forth uh, so that was, that was the essence of the opinion I gave. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, just really two quick follow-up questions, um, Attorney McLean. If we're charging admission, and this is just more, so again, we're going into this our, with our eyes wide open. If we're charging admission to use the quarry facility, is that the same, or charging a rental fee to use the quarry, is that the same as admission um, no. as, a, as a spectator? And then secondly, how is what this would be doing different than you know, what we currently do at Lake Michigan, you know, with, uh, with respect to swim at your own risk? Um, as far as what we do with Lake Michigan, it's basically the same. Okay. You know, there are risks at the, uh, at the lakefront as well, 
uh, we had a drowning from the uh, whatever it was, riptide or uh, undertow or whatever. So that's that can be dangerous out in the lake as well. Um, the other aspect of your question was we rent out the quarry. Is uh, that the same as okay. charging admission? The the only exception is if. Uh, city as owner at an event for which the city charges an admission fee for spectators so this is uh, like if you had a stadium there or uh, okay uh, and charged admission for the spectators it's not for the participants under the under the law it's just the spectators so uh, no opening up rental on the uh, quarry view center separate and apart from the quarry uh, I don't think triggers uh, Thank acts you. an exception to the liability. Alderman Bourne. Excuse me. Alderman Bourne. Thank you again, Mayor. Uh, Attorney McLean, I, also in our discussion today, and I think this followed up that one public works meeting, you were in consultation with the city's insurance company, Civmic, about the possibility of opening up the quarry without lifeguards. Could you share with the council what their position was, the insurance company for the city? Um, Steve, can you speak into your mic a little bit? Some people are having trouble here. All right. Um, if that's what I said, Alderman Bourne, I, I apologize. I did not speak to anybody from Civmic. I think it was uh, Dave Beeble or, or David Cookook had spoken to a representative at the Cities and Villages Mutual Insurance Company. And my recollection of what was said at the, this is that uh, came up at one of the, uh, Parks and Recreation and Marina Committee meetings was that the uh, CIDMIC was not in favor of the city opening it up at your own risk. Could we get a clarification from Mr. Beeble on that, Mayor? Director, Public Works Director David Beeble. Could you answer the question for us, please? It's my understanding that uh, our park superintendent, Dave Cookhook, had a conversation with CIPMIC. And uh, being in the insurance and risk industry, uh, clearly it wasn't their recommendation uh, to open it, um, being that they're going to be our provider of the insurance if, mm -hmm. if there would be a situation. Thank you. Does that answer thank, your question? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, David. Alderman Wongaman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I. Uh, appreciate Alderman Bourne's concern, but if we look at all the other parks we have, we take Kiwanis Park, we could rent out the shelter house there. You have the uh, shelter down at the end of the North Pier. Children could easily walk out there and fall off the pier. You have the South Side Beach where uh, swimming is done and you have that new uh, facility down there. So it exists in all the parks and I, I think it's just uh, part of our culture that uh, People like to be near water when they have picnics. So I think it's to the point where uh, parents, of course, have to share that obligation to uh, look after their children when they're in these things. And it, it seems to me to be quite clear that unless the circumstances were quite extraordinary, that the city would not be held liable. So it would be uh, my vote to uh, go ahead with the opening of the quarry. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Wongaman. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just in an effort to clean this up and make sure we're all on the same page, I would like to offer an amendment that DPW, DPW removes um, all the man-made objects such as the uh, slide tower, the fence line, and anything else that we may deem not necessary anymore. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we amend the initial ordinance to include requesting the D Department of Public Works to remove the man-made objects like fencing and the tower to reduce our liability. I think they were intending to do that under anyway, but they will clear this up this way. Alderman, was there a second? I did. Okay. Alderman, on the amendment, Alderman Hamm. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think this is a, a great idea. Um, I know it'll take maybe a few extra to a week to get this thing open. But to Alderman McLean's, or Alderman, Attorney McLean's, you can always be an Alderman if you want. But <laughs> Attorney McLean's um, point, I mean, anytime you have that kind of temptation, why not just remove the temptation? Um, so I would support the amendment. <clears throat> All right. We're going to vote on the amendment first. Do you want to speak on the One amendment? More, and I'm done. On the amendment. Yes. Then I've got a quick, uh, so on the amendment. 
Our Thank you, Mayor. Part. Last time I'm going to speak. And, and I just want I'll to point out the fact that, that we, we do have a group of uh, citizens out there um, that have volunteered to assist D DPW to take all this stuff down. And since that uh, article came out in the paper, I've had three or four more people contact me via email that also want to join that group. So you'll be in contact with Dave on that? Yes. Thank you. Alderman Clark. On the amendment, we'll vote on the amendment first. Attorney? Uh, yeah, one comment. Uh, I guess I would prefer that the, the ordinance be clean. Uh, I, I know what you're proposing to do uh, as uh, sort of uh, items to go with, with uh, the change in the ordinance, but I don't really think you want those sorts of things in the general ordinance book, uh, like me drafting up an ordinance to have that, mm -hmm. or uh, a hold harmless agreement. You don't actually want that in the ordinance. Uh, those are sort of administrative things you want the staff to, uh, to do, uh, following up upon change in the ordinance that would allow swimming there. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Then I would move, uh, we pass the ordinance and direct the city attorney's office to draft a hold hot notice agreement and DPW um, to remove all the equipment and fencing um, as part of the uh, beginning of the operations of the quarry. So we're back to, we'll pass the resolution as stated and we'll draft the resolution. We'll just direct the city attorney's office Directing to, the city attorney hold, to hold armless and DPW to okay. clean up the, the area down there. It's been moved and seconded to remove. Okay. Are, you, are you willing to remove your amendment? That, that's fine if you want to put it all together as long as it, the hold the harmless. Motion. Well, basically what, what I'm doing here is just to amend to include administrative documents not in the ordinance. It's like having the job description right. after the ordinance for a TO. So that's what you would be voting on if right. that's what you want. Back to the, thank you, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Attorney McLean, recently, uh, within the last couple of weeks, either Racine or Kenosha opened up their quarry without lifeguards. There was a death there. Have you been in contact with that city attorney about what's going on there? Is there any pending litigation that you're aware of, um, regardless of their immunity? And I'm just, as, as another follow up, I'm just wondering what would this do? Should we go ahead and, and open the quarry up? due to our future insurance premiums, seeing as how the insurance carrier is kind of telling us they would prefer that we not do this. Do you have any idea as far as that goes? Um, sure. Um, uh, no, I haven't had any contact with people in Racine. I believe uh, David Beeble had received a, a video or has a video, um, some news article or something uh, from TV or something down in Racine area, but. I do understand that there was a drowning uh, after they opened up their comparable quarry, I guess. Uh, and I'm not aware, I haven't read anything as to whether there's any litigation. It, it's pretty, pretty soon as to uh, typically there would not be right away. Uh, but that's, uh, that's a very real concern. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but I, and I don't know the facts and circumstances of that case, but I would uh, just uh, assume that the defense in a case like that, if uh, Racine was sued, it's going to be recreational immunity as well. And unless there was something, uh, uh, some malicious conduct again on the part of the uh, municipality or its uh, officers, agents, or employees, uh, the city would be uh, held immune from suit. Uh, as far as effects on insurance premiums. Uh, as we mentioned in the last council meeting, we're, we're a member of an insurance risk pool of, I think there's now about 43 different municipalities throughout the state, some larger, some smaller. And uh, typically uh, any, any uh, uh, payouts, from one community for one particular year are not going to impact that community's rates. Uh, that's the advantage of a risk pool is, uh, the assumption is somebody somewhere is probably gonna get hit in any particular year or any given year, but in the aggregate, 
um, there's not going to be a great deal of exposure throughout the entire pool. So um, typically the insurance pool, SIDMIC, which we're not just a, an insurance holder on that, we're actually a member of the, uh, the risk pool. Uh, it's not likely that an incident like that, if there was a payout, uh, would impact our premiums in any particular year. To answer your questions? Yes, thank you. Alderman Van Ackeren. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've been in several meetings over the last couple of weeks about this issue and in, and in talks with Director Beeble. It is my understanding that if we do pass this ordinance change that the Department of uh, Public Works would take about approximately a week to clean up the area, remove the fence, put in the uh, proper signage as well as uh, life-saving equipment similar to the north and south beaches. Um, obviously the only difference being that the, uh, the quarry doesn't have the current problems that we do on Lake Michigan. So I honestly think it's, it'll be a safer environment for people to go and, and gym, uh, swim recreationally. So I do support this going forward. As I said, Director Beeple indicated it would take about a, a week or so to accomplish once we give it our blessing, if that's what we decide to do. And uh, hopefully we can then allow for the last you know, two months here of the summer that uh, people are able to utilize that. Any other discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. First, we have, to, I'm sorry. we have to vote on the motion to include administrative documents to amend to. Okay. So we need to do that first. And that would be 16 ayes. Now we'll now we need, need to need go a motion back. as amended. We already have that. We already well, have I one. make the motion Not to. As amended. Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah, we do. Then I'm all right. And we'll vote. Hold on. Let me get it. We'll vote on the ordinance as amended. Any other discussion? We'll take the vote. Yep. Fourteen eyes, two no's. Motion carries. Six two will lie over. Six three will be referred. Matters lied over. A resolute an RO from the purchasing agent submitting quotes for purchasing a four diesel powered vacuum in born we factors thank you mayor uh, if I could I would like to take documents 7172 and 73 together uh, for the people watching at home uh, they're pretty similar uh, 7 one just says uh, the RO uh, by the purchasing agent submitting quotes for the purchase of four diesel powered vacuum leaf collection trailers for the motor vehicle department uh, the motion I would make on all three of them would be a motion to accept and file the RO, pass the resolution, and accept and adopt the RC. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and file the RO, accept and pass the resolution, and accept and adopt the committee report. Thank you. Under discussion. All the Under discussion, Mayor, these uh, new uh, diesel-powered vacuum leaf collection trailers are to replace the system that we've been using the last few years where allegedly the view of the driver was obscured by the, the vacuum cleaner being in front. These will be trailers, it'll be a two-man operation, they'll be the person driving the truck with an unobstructed view, and then there will be uh, another staff member walking behind the truck and actually vacuum, vacuuming up the leaves. So that should... Uh, uh, we saw a report on this from uh, Director Beeble at one of the recent public works meetings, and it looks like a very efficient system while eliminating some of the concerns of visibility while they're being collected. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Is there any other discussion? Clerk will call the roll. <clears throat> 16 ayes. Motion carried. 7 4, a resolution by Alderman. Item in authorizing and executing an agreement for access of property and environmental remediation. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the resolution, the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Heideman. Okay, under this resolution, this allows the Great Lakes National Program Office to use this area for parking equipment, for the dredging, dewatering, and the transportation of sediments from the Sheboygan River. Um, and that project could be completed uh, May of 2013. 
Thank you, Alderman Heideman. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Sixteen ayes. Motion carries. Eight one in our eight two and under other matters will be referred. Eight three an RO from the pers purchasing agent submitting bids for Sheboygan River area concerns for habitat restoration. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, request that we take eight three eight four eight five and eight six together, please, as they're all relative to each other. It's been moved and seconded. Second. To. <laughs> To accept all the, the <laughs> A3 through A6, the resolute ROs, and the two resolutions be put upon their passage. Under discussion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And as part of this, also would ask that we suspend the rules. Second. On, those, on all those documents. So we will vote on suspending the rules first. Any discussion on suspending the rules? Otherwise, the clerk will call the roll. <clears throat> 16 ayes. Thank Alderman you, Mr. Hamm. Mayor. I uh, make a motion to um, accept and file the two ROs and pass the two resolutions. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept and file the two ROs and pass the two resolutions. Is there any discussion? Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Just for the, as Alderman Bourne um, indicated for the people at home, this is for the uh, Sheboygan River Area Concern of Habitat Restoration Projects, which is um, restoration improvements for Islinging Park, um, Wildwood Island, and the river bank adjacent to Kiwanis at the EPA. Um, part of this will be getting funds or accepting funds from the EPA. Part of it is appropriating funds from the EPA to the project um, and, again, um, for the restoration of those three areas. Thank you. Under dis Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Under discussion, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Also, for the benefit of the people at home, uh, during our discussions on this at Public Works, these funds also uh, uh, contain uh, money to continue to monitor this restoration for a period of five years, so the city really doesn't have to do it. The funding provides for, I, I guess it would be the EPA, whoever's going to do it, but for five years. So, for example, the, the enhancements that are going to be made by uh, uh, Kiwanis Park, for example, that'll be monitored for five years to see that it's effective before we would have any responsibility as a city. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Any other discussion or questions? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 16 ayes. Motion carried. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move a uh, motion to convene in closed session under the exemption contained in. He's got a couple more other matters, I'm sorry. Oh. Before, let's do that so we can a rush. Take care of before the, yeah, I, I don't see it here. City Attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. 8.7 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2013 and June 30, 2014. That will go to law and licensing. And 8.8 .8 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Kelly Hine, executive director of Meals on Wheels, that they have submitted an offer to purchase a piece of land behind the Taylor Drive property, formerly the Shuckert parcel. That will go to the plan commission. Actually, it'll go to finance. They changed their mind. Finance. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Are you ready? Yep. A uh, motion to co convene closed session of the exemption contained in section 19.85, uh, subsection 1G, Wisconsin statutes, for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the city with respect to litiga litigation, which it is and which it will be likely to become involved. Second. Move second to go into closed session. Any discussion? All those in favor, uh, the clerk will call the roll. <clears throat> 16 ayes. Motion carried. We'll ask the uh, media and the crowd to, and we'll reconvene in about five minutes. We don't even know if we can.